Hello and welcome to this um, quick tip video from Jason's Macintosh Museum. And this video is really designed to explain what options you have for the Macintosh Portable with regards to replacement batteries and replacement um, power adapters. Because, let's face it, the Macintosh Portable is now almost uh, 25 years old, in fact. <laughs> And so it's almost impossible to have a Macintosh portable with its original battery and its original uh, power adapter. And even though the Macintosh portable did use a sealed lead acid battery and used a unique power adapter, you do have options as to how you can get replacements to, to get your portable going again. But this video is also intended to, to uh, let everybody know that if you use the wrong type of battery or charger, you can in fact damage the portable. So you have to be very careful. So first, let's talk about batteries. Now, the Macintosh portable originally came with a 6 volt, um, 5.5 amp hour sealed lead acid battery. I don't have an original battery to show you, but I'll put a photo in so you can see what it looks like. And that battery, being sealed lead acid, it was heavy, but it offered exceptional battery life for a machine like this. But of course, the downside, as you have with all sealed lead acid batteries, is that once the battery's voltage gets below a certain point, especially if it's left for a long period of time in a discharged state, then the battery is basically junk. You can't recharge it, it won't take a charge, its voltage will never get back up to its normal rated uh, voltage. So as a result of this, almost all of the original Macintosh portable batteries that were sold are now um, completely dead. But if you have an original Macintosh portable battery, you can in fact open it up and put a new cell inside. But, on the other hand, if you don't have an original Macintosh portable battery, you can substitute a sealed lead acid battery like this one to use instead. Now, these batteries are very easy to get hold of. They're very common. They're often used in, um, in, as backup batteries for alarm systems and, and other such things. And this one is a 6 volt, 4.5 amp hour sealed lead acid. And so the capacity is a little bit less than the stock battery that would have come with the portable, but it still works perfectly well. And the only challenge you have is to adapt the terminals on this battery for the terminals that are actually used inside the portable. So let me give you a closer look at the battery compartment in the portable and show you how I've done it. Well, here's the battery bay out of the Macintosh portable. And if you look closely, you can see we have two spring tabs. One here, I'll just move these out of the way. We've got two spring tabs, one here and one over here. These are the original tabs that would have connected with the standard battery because the standard battery that, well, the stock battery had two pads on the bottom one for positive, one for negative, of course, and they would simply sit on these little spring tabs. But if you're trying to use a battery like this, in a port, uh, like this, <laughs> in a portable that has these spade connectors, you have to do a little bit of, little bit of work. So what I've done, for example, is created two leads with spade connectors on each end. You can see them there. One end fits over the, the actual spring tabs in the battery compartment, and the other one fits over the spade connectors on the battery itself. And that works quite well. And what I've also done is I've put some Velcro tabs here, and, well, they're not on this battery, but on this the battery I use, I put Velcro tabs on the bottom, so that when I push it into the battery compartment, it holds it in place, because note, that the, this replacement battery is a little bit smaller than the battery compartment itself and so to prevent it from rolling and uh, knocking around in there I've put the Velcro on it. So as far as a battery is concerned that will work perfectly well but I want to talk now a bit more about power adapters and 
why it's important to have a good battery in a Macintosh portable. Now, I'm sure a lot of people who are used to using old laptops wouldn't really bother about having to, having to get hold of a working battery for them. They would be happy running them off the mains adapter, the AC adapter. Now, normally that would be fine, but the Macintosh Portable is a bit of a special case because it, its circuitry, its internal power supply circuitry is designed to work with a battery. If you try and run a Macintosh Portable without a battery, or at least without a, a um, somewhat charged battery, you may find that it won't start up at all. You'll plug in the power adapter, but the machine will not boot. And that's because, again, of that internal design. If you want to run a Macintosh portable, you must have a sealed lead acid battery, either the original one or one like this, installed and working, at least somewhat charged, before it will even start up, even off the mains adapter. And that brings me to another point about the mains adapters, in that a lot of people are, in, are inadvertently using a, an incorrect mains adapter for the portable, and that can be causing damage to the system itself. So let me explain. The portable originally, when it was released, came out with a power brick adapter, which was white in color. Again, I don't have one, but I'll put a photo up so you can see what it looks like. And this power adapter was rated at 7.5 volts at 1.5 amps, which gave you 15 watts. Now, that was fine, that worked perfectly well. But over time, as these power adapters, um, as they weren't very common, they're only ever sold with the Macintosh Portable, people have been looking for alternatives. And it was discovered that the later power adapter that looks like this, the um, grey coloured adapter that was used in the Macintosh PowerBook series of laptops, such as the 100, 140, 150, 160 and 170, it was also rated at the correct voltage, it had the right polarity and it had the right plug on it. So you could plug it in and use it with a Macintosh portable and it would appear to work just fine. But there's a catch and it all has to, it all has to do with capacity and current draw. These power adapters for the PowerBook 100 series vary in terms of their power output. Some like this low power adapter are rated at uh, 2 amps at 7.5 volts. Um, some of the others are rated at I think uh, two and a half and there are others that are rated at 3 amps which were used to drive the later PowerBooks that had colour displays. Now, even though they all supply 7.5 volts, they limit, they only limit the current flow based on their rating. In other words, this adapter will supply as much current as the device will draw up to a limit of 2 amps. And that's where it gets tricky, because the Macintosh Portable does not have any current limiting internally for the mains adapter. Most other laptops do, in that basically the internal circuitry, the power supply circuitry, the DC to DC converters and what have you, will limit the current as required by the system. But the portable does not. It relies on the power adapter itself to limit the current. And as a result, if you use a power adapter that supplies more than 1.5 amps at 7.5 volts, you can, over time, damage the portable. What will happen is that various components, such as the charging MOSFET and other um, converters, such as the 6 to 12 volt um, boost converter, the DC to DC converter, they will, all, they will all be fed, they will all draw more current than they're rated for, and they will eventually burn out. But it doesn't happen right away. The, from what I've seen, people can use these for quite some time on a Macintosh portable and it will work just fine. But eventually, you'll find that the portable will simply not start up at all. And that's often due to one of the DC-DC converters failing.
one or more. Now, the situation is exacerbated if you try and run it without a battery. Because what people will often do with a Macintosh portable is they may not have a working battery, so they try a uh, two amp power book adapter like this, and it doesn't. Qu it may start up, but then when the hard drive tries to spin up, it will shut off because the supply voltage drops too low. So they think, oh, not enough current. So they get hold of a two and a half or a three amp power book adapter and try that, and it works. But what you're doing is you're basically feeding the charging circuitry and the power supply circuitry more current than it was designed for because it is meant to work with a charged battery. In the same sort of way that a car, a car's alternator is designed to work in conjunction with a good battery. The same principle applies here. And the end result is that if you run a Macintosh portable with a um, a two, two and a half or three amp power adapter, and if you run it without a battery or with a flat battery or a completely dead battery that won't, won't charge, you make the problem 10 times worse. So, so for those of you who have a Macintosh portable, um, one that's still, in, still functioning, please, um, please heed this warning. Do not use one of these PowerBook 100 series adapters with it. You will, over time, cause damage. So then you're probably asking, well, what can I use? Well, all you need to find is a regulated 7.5 amp plug pack with a maximum current supply limit of 1.5 amps. And in fact, at least in Australia, that's quite easy to do because um, I picked up this one from JCAR Electronics. And this is a multi-voltage uh, plug pack, which can be set to 3, 4.5, 6, uh, 3, 4.5, 5, 6, 7.5, 9 or 12 volts. But in each case, its maximum current limit is 1.5 amps. So it matches the ratings for the original Macintosh portable adapter perfectly. And it also comes with a set of plugs, interchangeable plugs, one of which is a perfect match for the Macintosh portable. You have to make sure you get the polarity right when you, uh, when you connect it up. So that's what I use. I use these six volt batteries which are about, oh, I don't know how much they are, $15, $20, I think, roughly. And I also use this power adapter. But admittedly, what I often do is, if I want to charge the battery to, again, reduce the load on the power, on the power book, on the portable's charging circuitry, I will often hook up an external charger and charge the battery outside of the portable and then put it in when I'm, when, when I'm ready to use it. So basically, I hope um, you found this, this video um, informative. And um, so to all of you who have a Macintosh portable, um, this is one way to, to make it last because I've seen quite a few Macintosh portables that will not start up, will not charge their battery, none of that. And it often can be traced to using an incorrect power adapter along with a bad or, or non-existent battery. So please keep that in mind. I should also point out that the newer, the, the later PowerBook models, such as the PowerBook 100, 145, 140, 150, 160, they did not have this problem. So you can safely run them off the power adapter alone, and they do have current, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. Um, I believe that some models, such as the PowerBook 100 or 150, also did not have current limiting. So you would want to use the correct adapter for them as well. But again, it's quite easy to find a replacement if necessary. These PowerBook 100 series adapters are still quite easy to, to get hold of. 
but the adapters for the portable are not. So that's why many people have used these as a substitute. So, hope you enjoyed this um, quick tip, and um, thank you for watching.